Good afternoon, everybody. Greetings. It is that time for our Bible class on Wednesday afternoon. We thank everybody for tuning in uh, this afternoon, and we're just so grateful to be here. We want to uh, give a shout out to our senior pastor, Pastor George Rayford, and our technical team here at New Community Baptist Church. So today, we're just so thankful to be here again. Let us have a quick word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come thanking you this afternoon for being so good to us, God, and allowing us to be here for another uh, Wednesday afternoon Bible class. God, we thank you for being so gracious and kind to us. God, we ask that you would uh, open up our mind, God, that we might be able to look into your word, Lord, to uh, bring out, God, what it is that you have for us on this afternoon. Now, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you. And everybody said, Amen. Uh, again, good afternoon. We want to look today uh, at the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, and we want to look at verse number 33. Matthew 6 and 33. Again, we just are so grateful to be here again today, and we want to look at Matthew 6 and 33. The Bible says, But first, Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Jesus is in the longest sermon that he ever preached. He preached from the fifth chapter through the seventh chapter, and we commonly call this sermon the Sermon on the Mount. And this sermon um, is really talking about how we live uh, amongst each other, how we respect each other, how we feel uh, about each other because we are members of his kingdom. And in this sixth chapter, I thought we would talk about uh, for a little while this, this afternoon and ask a question, is God first? Is he really first in my life? In these uh, chapters, we find that God's kingdom agenda, it can be defined as the visible manifestation of the comprehensive rule of God in every area of your life. Let me say that again. God's kingdom agenda can be defined as the visible manifestation of the comprehensive rule of God over every area in our life. Frequently in scripture we read that Jesus came to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. In fact, Jesus' longest sermons, which we're talking about this afternoon, is specifically about the kingdom. Uh, the centerpiece of that sermon is located right in the middle of it. It's in the sixth chapter, uh, as we said, uh, in the 33rd verse. Jesus definitely explained how we ought to view and position God in our lives. This, this principle is the foundation in which we ought to build our destiny and how our destiny begins to take, take shape. Jesus said it simply, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things that we are after shall be added unto us. Now, I want to uh, talk first of all about the word that this whole text swivels on and that word is first. If, if, if that word gets lost in our life, um, our experience of God and his plans for our life, they, it will be diminished. God and his kingdom demands to be first. I know we have a lot going on these days and we're trying to do a whole lot of things and there's nothing wrong with that uh, in its rightful place. But in order to experience uh, uh, God's will and plan for our lives, God said, first seek 
the kingdom. Amen. He said he wanted us to first to seek the kingdom in all the things that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are trying to do, all of our ambitions, all of our plans, all of our aspirations. God is saying, he says, I'll deal with that. He says, but first, the key is first, he says, I want you to seek me and my kingdom. The problem is with most of us Christians uh, uh, and the reason why so many of us are not fully experiencing and living out our destinies is that is that God and his kingdom is, is not first. We might we, we have to admit it. In my own life, I have to uh, constantly make sure that that God is first in whatever I do. No matter how long, uh, many hours I work and, and, and what I aspire to do, I must remember to keep Christ and his kingdom. It has to be first. Yes, it does. Sure, uh, God, God is, he's in our life, most of us. Uh, this is a sermon on the mount that is, is talking to mo uh, those people who, who had came there uh, to see Jesus. They, they, they believed in him already. And so this, this sermon uh, that Jesus is teaching us in, it's, it's got a lot to do if you've already uh, signed on to of Jesus being the savior of the world. And, and he's wanting to explain to us what that looks like in our lives. And he did this um, in the fifth, sixth, and seventh chapter of Matthew. And he wanted to give us a, a, a working idea of what it meant to, to seek him first. Uh, as I said, the Lord is, he's around, sure, he's in the vicinity, uh, he's, he's one of the things on our uh, things to do list, but he's not first. And when we're honest with ourselves, we'll realize and we will say, we will admit to ourselves that sometimes he's just not first. And so one of the, 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 the uh, uh, points I want to make today in our, in our lesson is I want to challenge us to, to think about making Christ first in our life, that we might become blessed by what he said. He guaranteed us some things if, if, if we put him first. Amen. We worship the Lord. We worship the Lord because he is first. Uh, above all rule and authority, he alone is worthy of the number one position in our life. Uh, as we often say, God is the one that gives us uh, 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 air in our lungs to breathe. And, and, and the Bible says in the book of Acts, it is by him that we move and breathe and have our being. So really when we get uh, 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 technical about it, there is no uh, one and nothing should have first place in our life but him. He should be first. And uh, as Dr. Tony Evans once said, you make time for what is uh, 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 first in your life. You make time. I make time for what uh, is important to me. I, I do. I make time to to uh, spend time with my wife because she is important to me. I make time to 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 do the things that God has called me to do. You make time to do uh, to do the things that are important to you, and therefore that's why God says, "Seek me first. If I'm important, then you ought to seek me first. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew, the 10th chapter, in verses number 38 and 39, he said this. He says, anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me, he said, is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life. Here's where it gets interesting, guys. He says, well, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever uh, loses his life for my sake will find it again. My God, what does that really mean? We've heard those scriptures quoted for many years and it sounds kind of impossible when you look at the, you know, am I going to really literally give my life? Here's what Jesus is saying. A disciple of Jesus must take up his cross and follow him. The cross of Christ became relevant to you and I the day we accepted Jesus as our personal savior. But we don't just leave it behind at the moment of salvation. Instead, we're to take it and carry it with us throughout our whole life. Your cross and my cross, listen to this very carefully, it has to do with, with our public identification with Jesus. Yes, it does. To bear your cross is to endure hardship specifically because you're a visible and verbal follower of Jesus. If you're unwilling to do that, 
we're unworthy of Christ. That is, our relationship with him is distant. Y'all remember when Peter, when, when, when they were in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and, and when Jesus was going through his trials and, and they accused Peter of being one of those that followed Jesus. And at that time, Peter didn't have what he needed. And, and the, Bible, the Bible said Peter followed at a distance as they were uh, uh, sending Jesus and he was going through all that he was going through for us. Peter watched at, at, at a distance because he was in fear, but, but he, he couldn't leave. He stayed there and he followed at a distance. And so we learn that, that, that if we don't take up our cross and follow Jesus, we don't identify with him in our everyday life. When we're out in our jobs and our occupations and whatever we are doing in school or, or wherever we find ourselves, we must identify with people. One of the ways that people will identify us as, as disciples of Christ is that we love people and we respect everybody and we treat people like we ought to be treated. It's one of the principles Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount, do unto others as you would have them to, to, to do to you. And so we have to be people who are visible out in the world, wherever we find ourselves, we have to be visible that where, where Christ, uh, his opinion is out there, his love, his care, and his justice is out there. And that's how we pick up. And sometimes people won't want you in their circle because you live for Christ, because Christ is first in your life. Sometimes people, uh, they, they want, uh, don't want you to be uh, really uh, close to them because the real them will come out. And, and those of us who are trying to live and, and keep Christ first in our life, we want him to be first in our life. Whatever we're doing, whether, whether we're having some leisure time or we're at the job or we're at the gym or wherever we are, Christ has to be first because he commands, again, the number one position in our life because he is everything to us. Amen. So that is what it means to be a follower of Christ. Again, to be a verbal, visible follower of Christ. If we're unwilling to do that, we're really unworthy of Christ. That is, again, our relationship with him is distant. In other words, to experience life, here's where it is, and we're almost, uh, we're going to close here in a minute. In order to experience the life we're looking for, we must be willing to lose the life we have. Hmm. This is one of Jesus' paradoxical statements. In other words, it, it really doesn't make sense when you say to, to lose your life, to get another life, Jesus is saying here, in order to experience true life with Christ and to experience the life that we're really looking for, we want a life that, as Jesus said, that we might have it more abundantly. But we can't live that life outside of the context and the confines of what Jesus called us to live. He must be first. To experience this life, the life that you and I are looking for, a life that is blessed, a life that, that is full of joy and peace and experiencing the mercies of God every day. In order for us to experience a life, we must be willing to lose the life that we have. In other words, the decisions that I could, could make, I don't make them because of Christ. The, my itinerary, I don't have it so full where well, there's no time for Christ. Whatever I'm doing, I, Christ must be considered in whatever I'm doing. So this is one of, again, Jesus' paradoxical statements, again, where it doesn't really make sense. If you give your life over to Christ, he'll give it back to you. But the life that he gives back to you It'll be the life that Paul talked about in Galatians. He said, the life that I now live, I live it by the faith and of, in the Son of God who gave himself for me. That's the life that he's going to give in exchange. A life that uh, helps us to endure when things go wrong. A, a life that is full with joy and peace 
He gives us love and long suffering to help us to love in difficult times. When we try to live our life on our own terms, beloved, we'll lose it. We'll lose it. When we try to live our life on our own terms, uh, we'll, we'll lose what we think we have. And as I close today, I want us to remember that Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 22 and 23 says, And God put all things under Jesus' feet and gave him as head over all the things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who, who, who fills all in all. The Bible goes on to say in Ephesians, or excuse me, Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse number 3, it says, you shall have no other gods before me. You know, God has blessed us. We are some of the most intelligent people, blessed people that the church has ever seen. But God is demanding that he be first because he is the reason why we are successful. He is the reason why we have the ability to do what the church has never had the ability to do. We can communicate the gospel digitally now. The church has never had that opportunity to do that. And so God, he demands because he's giving us the vehicles to be a witness to the world and to one another and the lost. And so the Bible tells us in Proverbs, the third chapter, verse nine and 10, Honor the Lord with your wealth and your first fruits of all of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be running over. There it is again. It, it, it's exchange. It's the spiritual exchange that God is asking for. If you if put me first, I'll make sure that everything else is taken care of. I will make sure that, 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 that all that is dear will be taken care of. Again, the Bible says in Psalm 27, verse four, David said, this one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, there it is again, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I will gaze upon the beauty of the Lord to inquire, praise God, in his temple. God is so good to us. He's asking us, he's challenging us, and I am challenging us on this Wednesday afternoon that we might seek God first, that we might choose his way. When he says, seek me and all of his righteousness, that simply means that we ought to live the way that God called us to live. Live the way that he gave us the Holy Spirit to, 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 to enable us to live for him. Enable us to forgive and, and let live. Uh, enable us to do all that will magnify the name of Jesus Christ. He said, first, we got to seek him first. Because we are living witnesses of the goodness of Christ. So we want to fulfill our destinies, but the way that we get there is not the way that the world has prescribed. It is the way that our Lord has prescribed. He guaranteed us if we would just seek him first, he said, I'll add all the other things to you. Now, until next time, in Jesus' name, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for your word and blessing us, God, again, just out of the words uh, that Jesus spoke to us, Lord, that has been blessing our life and healing us, Lord, for two and a half millennia. God, we thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for uh, our church and our pastor, Lord, our technical team at New Community Baptist Church. And we just ask blessings, Lord, for everybody who's just trying to live for you. Now, in Jesus' name, we ask it all. And everybody said, amen.